Hello and a warm welcome to How to Have Your IA Marked Down by Your Examiner Top 10. Coming in at number 10, you have not used IB level chemistry. Nobody cares about IGCSE and NYP chemistry. You might argue, well, there's a mole calculation in there. So what? I want it definitely to be diploma level chemistry. Forget about disappearing cross. Forget about enthalpy of combustion of alcohols. Forget about effects of heat on vitamin C. We don't want to see that. Yes, you can score. You can score. Do you just want to score? Or do you want to score highly? I know which one you want. Highly, right? Number nine. Coming at number nine, every examiner's reports R squared and error bars. If you can't be bothered to do them, don't be expecting to get a high mark in the evaluation and analysis bands. How do you do R squared and error bars? Very easy in Google Sheets. Go to series, hit the button, you get them. Is that enough? No, it is not enough. You need to discuss the, the significance of the R squared value and what contribution the error bars have made to your report. More on random errors very shortly. Coming in at number eight, maybe the method does not test the research question. This comes back to, have you controlled all of the variables that a reasonable chemist could expect could affect your experiment? If you've missed some, or if you've not controlled some, that will be an issue. Your moderator, your examiner will pick this up. Coming in at number seven, number protocols. This is a massive one. If your maths are in incorrect, if your ratios are incorrect, if your significant figures are incorrect, your decimal places are incorrect, your uncertainty decimal places don't match your data decimal places, you will be marked down. You'll be marked down in personal engagement you've not cared enough to put it together correctly. You'll be marked down in analysis because the numbers are wrong. You'll be marked down in evaluation because your evaluation is now flawed because your analysis was incorrect and you didn't communicate that. So you've been marked down on just about every criteria. Number protocols, and maybe I should have put that at number one. Coming in at number six, systematic and random errors. It's not a surprise the IB love you to talk about systematic and random errors. Repeat will reduce random errors, not systematic. What's the difference? Do you understand the difference? Can you quantify or can you at least scale which is the biggest, which is the smallest? Which ones are in between? Where are they relative to each other? And what are your improvements as a result of the errors that you have identified? Number five. Not controlling the independent variable. I see loads of IAs. Independent variable is concentration, is temperature. Wonderful. How have you controlled it? Just because you turned a dial on the water bath that said 35 degrees C, how have you proved that your reaction, which is in a piece of glassware, and the glass is between the reaction and the water, and the water is relying on the button at the front of the bath, is actually at 35 degrees C? If you can't prove it to me or the reader, you have not controlled that variable. Coming in at number four, referencing. We don't want to see Quora or Wikipedia or, I don't know, Encyclopedia Britannica, maybe, maybe the last one, maybe the last one, but it has to be academic and your referencing has to be consistent. And if you've looked at a website, we want to see the date it was accessed and a link and maybe a little thumbnail picture of that website. Not a big picture, thumbnail, remember that. Coming in at number three, post graph reflection, anybody, can press the button on Logger Pro, on Google Sheets, on Excel, and get a graph produced. That does not mean you understand what that means, and that's what you need to convey to your reader. After the graph, we want to see the scientific context. We want to see any anomalies. We want to see the trend, the trend, every examiner's report, the trend. Discuss the trend. I've said it three times now. Coming in at number two, page count. It's between six and 12 pages. If I go to 13 pages, will it matter? Well, yes because the maximum is 12. It will matter more if the previous 12 pages of your 13 page IA were not concise. If they were concise and contained beautiful information which completely addressed, elucidated your research question, like that word, then yes, we will accept it. But if you go over 12 and there's any filler in there, there's any big pages of images which are not helping, then be super, super careful about sticking to the limit. You will be marked down on communication. And in no particular order, but coming in at number one is this rule of three. New in the examiner's report this year for 22, just released last week. If you're using database simulation or molecular modeling, any secondary data, you should be augmenting your data. I've been saying that word, augmentation of data, for the last six months of videos that I've been making. You must correlate the data you've got with reference data, with literature data, with the calculation, anything to enhance the robustness of the data that you are presenting as part of your internal assessment. Right, hope you found that helpful. Quick, quick throw up for a Wednesday afternoon. Smash that subscribe button. Catch you later, have a great day. Bye-bye.